Hey guys, this is Consumer Protection Attorney John Watts, and we're going to follow up looking at some of these articles that Enhanced Recovery has on their website. And this is How to Stop Debt Collector Harassment. So if you remember the last video, we talked about uh, their article, you know, basically, should you file a lawsuit against a debt collector? And I think over here, this was the article. And so it, it told you all these terrible reasons and just how awful it is to file a lawsuit. Of course, the truth of the matter is what makes a lawsuit bad is for the debt collector. When we sue the debt collector for violating the law, that is very time consuming for them, very expensive for them, and they can't stand it. That's why they're trying to convince you not to sue them. So here they say, look, here are better ways to stop harassment. So it says, uh, while it's perfectly uh, legal for third-party collection agencies like ERC Enhanced Recovery to attempt to contact you in regards to your debt, there are laws in place meant to protect consumers from harassment. That's true. So the FDCPA outlines a set of regulations that debt collection agencies should follow in order to prevent harassment. And now, l let me say this. It is true that there's a part of the FDCPA that specifically is about harassment, but the FDCPA as a whole is talking about harassment, lying, deception, and unfair conduct. This is only talking about harassment here, which frankly, we don't see this type of stuff very much. This is why ERC put this on their website, because this is not the vast majority of the lawsuits. The vast majority of lawsuits are from uh, lying and deception. So putting false stuff on our credit reports, failing to mark our credit reports as disputed, uh, calling us, maybe not yelling or cussing at us, but lying to us. And so anyway, just keep that in mind here. So uh, it says, look, don't contact you before 8 a.m. or 9 p.m. That's true. Don't contact you in work if you've requested this in writing. That's a complete lie. That's not what the FDCPA says. What the FDCPA says is that if you tell the debt collector like ERC, hey, my work does not allow me to get these kinds of calls, then they cannot ever call you again at work. You can tell them that verbally. Right here, what's on this website is an absolute lie, okay? That is 100% false. Now, if you do tell them in writing, hey, I'm not allowed to get these kinds of calls, they can't call you at work, but you don't have to put that in writing. And this is the sort of things that these debt collectors do. They will just kind of slightly, at least it appears to be, slightly mislead you, slightly misstate the law, okay? But doing that, even a slight misrepresentation is really bad, okay? I mean, it would be like somebody saying, hey, you know, in a normal year, not a COVID year, you know, when our taxes are due on April 15th, somebody saying, well, they're due on April the 25th. Well, I mean, look, out of 365 days, that's only 10 days. That's really, really small. Hey, it's a big deal to the IRS, okay? So let's see what else they say here. Maybe they can get the rest of this right. Not harassing the debtor in any form, including threats of harm, using obscene language or repeated contact by phone in effort to annoy the debtor. Okay, that's true. Not making false statements or misleading the debtor about their identity or the debt. Well, th that's true also. That's under 1692E, and the section E is for misleading or deceptive conduct. Now, there's a whole bunch of examples of this. Okay, this kind of makes it sound like it's really just focused on the identity, but that's not true. I mean, so for example, if if ERC sent you a letter saying this, well, that's not true. They lied to you. Okay, they lied to you in an attempt to get you to lose some of your rights. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I have collectors that watch videos. I don't know if they'll watch this and then come and change this because technically if you read this and relied on this, then they lied to you, okay? If they say, hey, come visit our website and find out about your rights and you read this, that would have been a lie to you. All right, so let's see what this next thing is here. Debt collectors should always notify you of their identity when you receive a call and they are required to provide you a verification of the debt if requested. Now, that's true. Now, 
to preserve your rights, you need to do that in writing. Okay, this is under section 1692G. And then they say you can visit the FTC. All right, putting an end to harassment. So if you believe you've experienced a violation of any of the regulations listed above, there are a few steps you can take to end harassment. So first, you should contact the collection agency directly and ask them to stop contacting you. Well, okay. I mean, you can contact the debt collector. And if you do it in writing, then you can tell them to cease contact and they have to honor that. There's a few little exceptions and we have videos on that. If you do it just verbally, they don't have to honor it. So, okay, that sure, you can do that. And they say, at ERC, we make this process as easy as possible, providing online contact form, which you can make a complaint or request to have your number removed from our system. Okay, well, just removing your number doesn't mean they'll stop contacting you. They can still write you letters. So I'm not sure if they're claiming that this would be a, quote, writing, because a cease communications has to be in writing. Maybe ERC is saying, hey, we will view our contact form as in writing. I don't know. And then they say, if contacting the agency did not provide any results, next step, file a complaint, Better Business Bureau. Okay. I mean, that doesn't hurt. I don't know that that really does any good for you. Your state's attorney general or the CFPB. And then says the last two so it'd be your attorney general and CFPB or organizations that can enforce the laws outlined the FDCPA and will assist you in dealing with debt collectors that have stepped out of line. Okay, I, I can tell you, at least my attorney general in Alabama, everybody I've known that's ever gone to them, they say, hey, look, we'll pass your complaint along, but that's all we're going to do. They got other things to do. The CFPB, again, they'll pass the complaint along, but I guess you could consider that will assist you, okay, uh, that have stepped out of line. I mean, it takes a whole bunch of complaints before the government will take action against these people. And then, okay, this is funny. Finally, in extreme cases, there is the option to take legal action, but this should be the last resort. So I guess this is what we're dealing with in the last video. Dealing with any kind of lawsuits, time-consuming, stressful, complicated, may end up costing you money. Well, actually, when you catch these debt collectors violating the law, including ERC, it's not time-consuming. It's not particularly stressful. If you are questioned about this, you just tell the truth. Pretty easy. Complicated? Well, not if you've got a lawyer that explains it to you. It's pretty simple, actually. It may end up costing you money you know, maybe one in 10,000 or something. The other 9,999, you know who it costs money? Right here, ERC, these debt collectors, okay? So again, this is just sort of a goofy article. And it, what they're trying to do, and again, I if you sort of put ethics aside and say, you know, is this clever as a business owner? Yeah, I guess it's clever to try to, when they harass people, and look, ERC is a big outfit. They know they're harassing people. They know they're violating law. And to try to say, hey, if we have stepped out of line, if you've caught us, well then look, come file an online contact form and um, you know we'll investigate it. That's all you need to do. Or maybe go to the Better Business Bureau and wait for a month or two. Or go to your attorney general or CFPB. Yeah, you'll be waiting a long time. And they, I mean, you don't want to do this. You don't want to file a lawsuit. So I, I get the sort of cleverness of ERC doing this. But I would suggest to you that um, obviously use your own judgment whether you think this is valid or not. I'm pretty skeptical of what they're saying here. And I say that having sued them a number of times. So I'm curious what your thoughts are about this. And maybe we'll check out some of these other articles and uh, see what they say here. So uh, anyway, appreciate you watching this. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know what your thoughts are about this. And I'm sure you know other collectors have these same types of things. And if you find this interesting, I'm happy to do more of these. Or if you'd rather me do case decisions or just sort of 
normal videos where, you know, I'm kind of on camera talking to the camera. Just let me know, and I'll be glad to uh, put out any type of videos that you guys want. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.